Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the conditional and statements that are related to the conditional. The conditional is the, you may have seen the little arrow, P implies Q, or if P then Q. There are statements that involve the conditional that are similar, and we want to explore how they're related to the conditional itself. So for example, if you turn the implication around and you say, if Q then P, we we call that the converse. That's what we get when we reverse the conditional. The next one we're going to look at is called the inverse. The inverse happens when you negate each of the component statements in the original conditional statement. So instead of P implies Q, we have not P implies not Q. So the order has stayed the same, but I like to think of it as the signs have changed, right? Because it's a negation, so you can kind of think of it like algebra, it's a sign. So if not P, then not Q is the inverse. And then finally, if you change both the signs and the order from the original conditional statement, then you get if not Q, then not P. And this is called the contrapositive. When the order is reversed only, it's the converse. When the signs change only, it's the inverse. And when both change, that's the contrapositive. So for example, if you're given the conditional statement, if I live in Wisconsin, then I shovel snow, let's go ahead and find the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. So the converse means that we're going to change the order of the implication. So instead of if I live in Wisconsin, then I shovel snow, we're going to turn that around. If I shovel snow, then I live in Wisconsin. The inverse, part B, means that we're going to keep the order the same, but we're going to negate each component statement. So that would be, if I don't live in Wisconsin, then I don't shovel snow. See how Wisconsin is still in the antecedent part of the statement, the if part, and the snow part is still in the consequent part of the statement, the then part, but we've negated them. And then finally, the contrapositive changes both, both the order of the components and the sign, the negation. So we would have, if I don't shovel snow, then I don't live in Wisconsin. You can also do the same thing when you have symbols. So here I have the statement, R implies not Q. And we're going to determine each of the following. A, the converse, B, the inverse, and C, the contrapositive. If you want, you can pause the video and try it yourself, just to test to see if you're on the right track. And then push play to see the solution. So for part A, we're doing the converse, which changes only the order. So this would change to not Q implies R. For part B, we're doing the inverse, which changes only the sign. So this would mean that the R still stays on the antecedent side and the Q still stays on the consequence side, but we're gonna change this to not R implies, and the negation of negation is the original statement, so not R implies Q. And then lastly, the contrapositive, we're gonna change both the order and the sign, the negation. So we're going to have Q implies not R. You might have noticed that the inverse and the contrapositives always turn out to be converses of each other. It's important to understand that there are certain relationships among these statements. In particular, a conditional statement and its contrapositive are equivalent, logically. In other words, when you change both the order and the sign, you get a logically equivalent statement. P implies Q is equivalent to not Q implies not P. Well, that means that the converse and inverse are also equivalent. If you take Q implies P, and change both the order and the sign to not P implies not Q, you also get an equivalent statement. So for example, if you have the statement, if you understand logic, then you recognize the truth, you can write an equivalent statement by reversing the order and the signs. So this is logically equivalent to saying, if you do not recognize the truth, then you don't understand logic. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video. The next video is going to be on alternative forms of the conditional.